Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. So you handed off something very interesting to me. You knew, you knew when you, you said, oh, Leo, <laughs> do you want this? I said, well, what is that? It is the LG G Flex. AT&T just announced it, but it'll be on every carrier in the U.S. except for Verizon. It's going to be one of those pricey ones, $300 on contract. And that's because it is, well, six inches. Now, I, you noticed, did you notice something? I was looking for the on-off switch all around it. I did. This is, is like the other LG G, uh, the G2. It has the switches on-off volume rockers on the back. That is so weird. It's just one of many weird things about the hardware uh, of this phone. It, it, it's, I, you know, I think what happens is if you're an Android handset maker, you've got to differentiate yourself. You've got to be different. And as a result, uh, Samsung, LG, HTC, everybody's doing something different. So this is LG's claim to fame. Now, when the G2 came out, a lot of people raved about this phone, uh, even though these rockers on the back are a little hard to get used to. I have a couple of problems. First of all, I'm just used to looking uh, on the side of the phone. I have to say, though, when you hold the phone to the side of your head, it seems more natural to have the volume up and down right there and the on-off switch. But here's the problem. See that camera lens? It's right next to it. How many times wow. have I smudged up the camera lens by touching the rocker switches? I, I wish they weren't so close together. Maybe put the camera lens over here. Mm -hmm. The other thing that immediately becomes apparent is the thing is curved. It's the flex. They say, and I didn't have the guts to do it, that you can actually flatten this phone. You can sit on it. I wouldn't recommend that. <laughs> I don't know why they do this. They've been doing curved TVs for the same... I have a curved TV at home. It's aesthetically very pr pretty, but it proposes some problems. It fits a little Can weirdly in the pocket. You, if, yeah, I mean, you can't <laughs> sit on it. Um, and, and, but it does feel nice against your head. And the thing about this, it's, it is a six-inch screen. It is a giant. It's bigger even than the Galaxy Note 3. This is a monster phone. Now, I, I thought initially, I, li I thought this is a very pretty screen. In fact... Um, they, they do some nice things. Oops, let's do... No, oh, yeah, there we go. It's a very pretty screen, and if you look at it, you might say, oh, ooh. But then, after you watch it for a while, you realize you see some pixelation, some color noise here. So, well, that's nice text, but I seem to be seeing pixel... It's 720p on a 6-inch screen. I think that that is too low a resolution. The Note 3, its biggest competition, is a 1080p phone. 13-megapixel uh, camera, much like the Note 3. And just like Samsung, LG just has to do its own thing. So they have some unusual things in the settings and so forth. Here's the, uh, the Q-Slide apps. This is kind of interesting. Let's launch the Q-Slide app uh, calculator. The calculator, yeah, yeah, don't show that again. The calculator floats as a window. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really know if I need Windows in my mobile phone. It's ironic. Microsoft's getting away from Windows, but Android's getting them. This is the same. Uh, there are three different kinds of windowing, by the way, in this LG G2 or G Flex, because uh, I guess one just wasn't enough. I don't know. <laughs> They've really got to find a differentiator. You'll also see uh, that the controls are a little different here, although I do like these quick controls right at the top. Um, if you go to settings, very much like the uh, Galaxy line, you've got now several pages of settings. I'm not fond of that. I have to say I'm a little bit, unfortunately perhaps, spoiled by the plain Google Experience phones. That's how I feel. Now that I've used KitKat on a Nexus or the fairly vanilla version of KitKat on my Moto X, it's hard for me to go back to the carrier uh, customization. Some of them, many of them, just seem random and strange. Now, of course, you could use a, uh, your own launcher so you don't have to have the apps button over here on the right instead of in the middle. And you, you can make it look more like, uh, you know, a KitKat phone. It's not KitKat, though. This is Jelly Bean 422. And given the number and amount of customizations on this phone, I have to wonder uh, how long it's going to take before they can get KitKat on here. There are quite a few fancy camera modes. Where have we seen this all before? It's very, <laughs> very familiar. Um, the camera is pretty good. Uh, I would say uh, it, it's as, you know, the nice thing about a 13 megapixel camera is you really uh, get a lot of detail in the shots. This is a tough shot because it's backlit and I think it looks quite good. The camera made the right decision. Um, it, I, I think it's maybe oh, wow. a little washed out in terms of color, but I think it's a good camera. It does a good job. 
And by the way, this is the built-in pano feature. Very fast, very easy to use. Of course, it's got 800 different features. You know what's missing? The golf mode. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's something I didn't like in the Galaxy Note 3. So there's a lot to like about this. I'm a big fan, as you know, of, of, of big phones, and this 6-inch phone has got plenty of screen real estate. I'm disappointed, though, that it's only 720p, and I do mm -hmm. see a lot of pixelation and color noise. It's just not a very good screen, which is a surprise because LG is kind of known for its good screens. Remember how people complained about the, the Galaxy S4's slippery, slimy plastic back? LG's doing the same thing doesn't bother me, but if you don't like plasticky backs, you may, you may not like this. Who's this phone for? Anybody who wants a six-inch phone that's curved. That's a <laughs> massive market, right? With buttons on the back. Now how much would you pay? <laughs> I'm sorry. As, as, 50 bucks. Yeah. As much as I like big phones, I've got to knock this down for three things. First of all, it's not a pure Google experience. It's not even close, and I just don't like the carrier craft. Second of all, the screen is just not great. The curve doesn't add anything. The weird form factor of the buttons on the back. Uh, some people might like that. I find it a little bit problematic, especially since the camera lens is right next to that volume rocker. So I'm going to have to give this a... I'm sorry, do not buy. Uh, I admire LG for, try, for hanging in there. You know, Samsung and, uh, and Apple seem to own the smartphone market, and LG's really trying to stay alive. Um, they do, in fact, make the Nexus 5 for Google. So they know how to make a great phone. Um, this is just trying too hard to be something different than a stock Google phone, and frankly, I don't see the reason. There you go. That's a do not buy for the LG G Flex phone available on everybody but Verizon in the United States and, uh, I believe, worldwide as well.